Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be continuing with the RPG Systems tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be refactoring a bit of the inventory. We're not really going to be doing that much of it, but what we want is we want to be able to um, move the inventory behavior onto the player itself rather than just having a scriptable object. Now, uh, there's probably a better way of doing this than the way I've come up with, but this way works just fine for now and there's no problems with it whatsoever. But in the future when we move on to like saving and loading, we might need to move some stuff around again. But that's just the nature of game development to be honest. Uh, I mean my favourite words are like modularity and like being generic and stuff. Because we want to make it so that we aren't limiting ourselves with our own coding, right? You want to code so that um, everything is modular to the point where you can do whatever the hell you like, right? And that's, that's, that's the point. You're making your own game, you want to be able to do whatever. So, we're making an RPG. Uh, currently, if we went to pick up an item, which we haven't actually made yet, we've made, obviously, interaction. In the next video, um, we're going to be doing item pickups, and this video is going to basically help with that. Because currently, if we go and pick interact with an item, how will it know how to add to our inventory? Well, there's two options. One, we uh, hard code it so that it refers to the inventory scriptable object, which means, yeah, it works, but every single item pickup we're going to have to manually set the um, inventory as a field. And obviously, yeah, you could do like a prefab for that, but still, it's just a bit of a, bit of a mess. And also, um, it's like, well, what if we don't want to be the only thing that's picking up items? What if we have an enemy goblin character that runs around uh, looking for pickups, like loot pickups, and when he finds them, he runs over to them and loots them, right? Well then, um, what what's going to happen there? It's kind of a problem, really, isn't it? Because if he interacts with it, the interact function is just going to say, okay, add it to the player's inventory, which is a bit silly. So we actually want um, something on the player to indicate he has an inventory, and then the actual items don't necessarily have to be stored on the player. We're going to keep the items stored on the scriptable object, which allows us to easily um, have the invent uh, the UI sorry reference those objects. But we still need to have a item container object on the player. So in reality, all we're going to do is implement the I item container on the um, player and write all those functions. But rather than writing the logic, we're just going to call the functions on the scriptable object. It might seem a bit, bit weird to do, and I'm sure there might be a better way to do it. If any of you guys know a better way, then feel free to tell me. But if no one doesn't, I'm assuming this is probably the best way I can come up with for now. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Should be, shouldn't be too difficult. But of course, this regular content wouldn't be possible without the help of my patrons, with special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Budere, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link is down below. If not, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could help me out by following on social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, joining the Discord server, and so on. All the links are down below. You can check my GitHub page for the ac for access to the code for all my projects from uh, pretty much when I started doing my videos again after I finished school. Every project since then that I've used on my channel, you can access there, and I'm going to continue to do that for free. I'm not going to you know, keep the code behind bars or anything. You can have access to it all. Um, yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so enough blabbering. Now let's get into the actual coding. So currently we have an item container class and an I item container interface. That's quite a common thing you might do because um, the reason you use interfaces is to abstract away the logic, abstract away the functionality, the implementation. You just want things to know that they can have these function calls and maybe these properties if you added properties. But the thing is, um, even though we do want this and we're going to keep this, we don't want this item container class because all we're doing is just having that in the scriptable object inventory, which does allow this to be reused elsewhere, but we're not going to reuse it elsewhere because this is specific for the player's inventory. So what makes sense, to me at least, is to go to the bottom of the functions and go all the way up, and we're going to copy, or we're going to cut at least, up to here. We're going to delete the item container constructor and the... Um, the yeah the constructor and the event go to the inventory get rid of the test add get rid of the on enable disable the item container reference the test item slot just to keep the event and we're going to go paste and we're going to get problems because we don't have the item slot array so let's just get rid of that we can delete the item container go back to the inventory and um, stick that there and now um, all we need to do is replace on items updated invoke with so if I basically take that line and put it in there 
and say replace it with on inventory items updated dot raise replace all then it fixes all those we can go back okay so everything's fixed here now um, this isn't necessary but I think it actually makes sense to call put this as an item container obviously it's gonna be happy but this just makes me know that I've implemented everything um, the way we actually need to use this interface is on a mono behavior because sadly this is a scriptable object so if we um, go to interact with something in our game and no, sorry, if we like go to interact with an item pickup, it basically, what, it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, thing that's interacting with me, do you have an inventory? Or oh, sorry, do you have an item container? If you do, then add my item to you, basically, that's what it's gonna do. Um, because we're storing the, the inventory logic and data on a scriptable object, what's gonna happen is, um, it can't find that interface. It it won't. It will say no. You don't have an inventory because the player doesn't have an inventory on them, right? They just have movement controller, animator, so on. So we need um, something to hold the scriptable object that is an item container that essentially delegates the logic to the scriptable object. Or I equally, we could just store the data on the scriptable objects and have the logic on the mono behavior. I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, if we go back to the scriptable object. Um, yeah, in reality, I think we need the logic on the scriptable object because we're going to be um, calling, for example, on the UI, uh, you know, like get slot by index. But I feel like for the actual like adding items, um, we could do it completely on the mono behavior. It really it doesn't matter where you put it. I don't think there's any preference. If someone knows like, oh, yeah, it makes more sense to put it here, then, you know, feel free to go ahead and recommend that. It's as simple as cut cutting and pasting if we need to. So I'm going to make a class in here called the inventory behavior dot cs. I'm going to set up the namespace and stuff really quick. Okay, so I've set up the basics of the class. Now all we need to do is uh, let it compile. Obviously, we've got some problems over here, so we'll check that in a minute. Um, we now want to... Actually, yeah, let's check what these problems are. Okay, so let me zoom out. Sorry, it's a bit too zoomed in, I think. We're currently referencing the inventory item container, but now the inventory is the item container. So we just need to remove that and that and let it recompile. Go to the item destroyer, say inventory dot remove that. Say inventory dot inventory dot. See, this is why we need the logic on the scriptable object because other things interact with the scriptable object. Whereas in the world, we interact with the actual player that can pass it on to the scriptable object. Now it's all happy. So on the player, we can have an inventory behavior. So what does the inventory behavior need? Well, let's zoom in again. Okay, so it needs a serialized field private inventory. Let's call it inventory. Okay, and we need to be of type I item container. Uh, obviously, if we implement the interface, we're going to get uh, all these functions. And in reality, all we need to do here, well, we can either move the logic here, as I said, but that's going to cause problems because then what we'd need to do is we need the inventory knowing about the inventory behavior. We want it the other way around. So when we add an item through the inventory behavior, we're just going to say inventory dot add item, item slot, item slot. Actually, no, we just need to say item slot. What am I doing? Like that. Um, but we need this function to return item slot. So we just say return that. So in reality, that's just essentially passing the logic on and doing it there, right? Um, same with the get total quantity, right? We can just say return uh, inventory dot get total quantity of this item. Use expression for that. We can actually just squeeze everything up, right? We can just say return inventory dot uh, has item item so I'm just gonna quickly go and finish these uh, I don't think I need to cut because there's only like three more functions so we're gonna say here uh, inventory dot remove at slot index make that um, apparently it's not telling me I can make it a expression but I can so let's just do that
inventory dot remove item item slot and finally inventory dot swap index one index two so now if we ever call these functions from uh, when we interact with the actual player we're just saying do it on the scriptable object so this is just a container mono behavior. This is just uh, something we have to do because the nature of Unity and game development, I guess. Um, now we can reference the inventory here. And if we interact with something and it gets our game object, it says like, hey, do you have an item container? We do, here it is. And if we want to add an item to it, we do. We just add it through the scriptable object. So that is that. Okay, I reckon we can actually do a test uh, pickup in like only a few minutes so we can do that in the end of this video uh, let me just apply the prefab to the player this cube is actually going to be in, uh, not test interactable anymore it's going to be an item pickup so what we'll do is we'll delete test interactable we'll go to items and we'll just make an item pickup script item pickup.cs and it's just going to say I'm going to set up the default stuff off uh, camera real quick Okay, so I've set up the namespace. It's a mono behavior that implements iInteractable. And all we want to do is we want this thing to know what item it's going to give us. So, sales field private item, item, like so. And we need to know about that. We could actually make this be an item slot so we can also add multiple. So we'll say item slot. Because an item slot is actually just. Um, an item and its quantity. We'll probably need to change the name of that to make more sense later, but we can do a quick rename everywhere if we want to. All we want to say now when we interact is we actually want to know about a game object that we've interacted with. So let's just say um, other. So we'll say um, I item container. Actually, we'll just say var item container is equal to other dot get component I item container. Oops. Just making sure the thingy we're interacting with has, or is able to essentially have items picked up. Uh, I really think I need to zoom out to get that. So we get the item container on the other thing. If item container is null, we can return. And then um, otherwise, we can just say item container dot um, add item item slot like so and that's going to return an item slot so we can just say item slot um, or, or we could say if item container dot add item dot quantity is zero destroy game object so the what I'm doing here is essentially saying um, when we add the item if the quantity afterwards of the thing we've tried to add is zero, so if it's being fully added, then destroy us, meaning we've all been added, right? Um, I, I mean, ideally we'd make this, like, th this is probably error prone, because uh, if it doesn't fully add it and stuff like that, there's some problems, but it's fine. Uh, we just need to now go and basically tell the interactor, so go up to the interaction stuff. Let's close the Unity events, close the listeners, close the custom events. We want to go up to the interactor. Um, an I interactable should pass through a game object. We'll call it other. And then the interactor, as I said, needs to now, um, when it calls interact, it needs to pass through the thing it interacted with, which is game object. Because the interactor is the interactor's game object. Um, but I guess one one problem with that actually is because the interactor isn't isn't on the root of the player, it's not going to actually be able to find it. So we should say uh, transform dot root dot game object. That's to tell it like you know the root of this thing. As I said, there's probably a better way to do that, and we'll like this is just a quick way to end the video showing that it works. Now, if we go to the cube and tell it it is a um, item pickup and it has uh, free health potions on it for example theoretically if we go and interact with it it should give us the item so our inventory is empty 
we'll walk up, we'll interact with it, and it says something is out of range because, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, as I said, the uh, inventory array wasn't initialized. So if we go over to the inventory behavior uh, on start, uh, we're going to want to say inventory dot set size 20. I'll just hard code it for now. Um, the inventory will have a function called like public void set size int size and we just say item slots equals new item slot array with size. Okay now it shouldn't be null. So our fire inventory is empty and we walk over to this and we interact it goes away we've now got three in our inventory. There you go and it works just like last time. Uh, apparently we get another error here. I'll have a look about that. Uh, it's to do with, oh yeah, the hovering and stuff. I haven't fixed that, but that's just a bit of the UI to fix. So yeah, that's it for this video. We've got the interaction working with the new inventory system. So I uh, hope you like this video. That's it for now. Um, I might do some refactoring off camera, but I know some of you guys will prefer me to do it all on camera. So I hope you stay tuned for next video where we move on to doing NPCs and setting all that up. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and goodbye.